Namaste. Welcome to the uh, second part of this uh, first day of Chapter 8. Uh, we're talking about uh, relations of functions last time. Linear functions and graphing uh, this time. Again, I think we have a good, pretty good take about graphing uh, and how that kind of relates to the concept of function we're going to talk about today. Um, so I have an equation here, y equals 4x plus 1. It uh, has x and y in it, so I'm going to be able to set, generate a set of ordered pairs. Uh, so it's going to be a relation. And this one is actually going to be a function, because every x number, every input value, I'll be able to assign one output or y value for that. And we've done kind of something similar to this before. So if you put uh, negative 2 in for x, you get 4 times negative 2, negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7 be your y value so that gives you a point um, negative 2 negative 7 All right. uh, put negative 1 in for um, x you get negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 so the input of negative 1 gives you output of negative 3 input of 0 will give you an output of 1 input of 1 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5 and input of 2, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1, y would equal 8 plus 1, or 9. And so I can create a table of values. Uh, if I was going to graph negative 2, I can, um, well, let's do this instead, I'm sorry. So if I want to, I want to plot these this relation, plot these points, negative two, negative seven, you're right there. Negative one, negative three. Sorry about that. Um, zero, one, one, five and 2, 9. And you see that this is going to be, this particular function is going to be a linear function, right? Because the graph of it forms a line. And look at that, my points line up, hence a linear function. Um, pretty necessary maybe for you to have some graph paper in this uh, chapter. Um, be very helpful. Also a ruler to make sure that you're drawing a line. We can really see that relationship, okay? And that's one-to-one -one relationship. Every 1x has one y that goes with it so it is a function and we call this a linear function because the graph forms a line now last time we talked about slope we said it's the change in y values compared to the change in x values that ratio and if I look at how the y values change um, from negative 7 to negative 3 is an increase of 4. It goes up by 4. When x goes from negative 2 to negative 1, it goes up by 1. And y goes up another 4 when x goes up another 1. So every time x goes up 1, y goes up by 4 by 4 by 4. So the change in y is it goes up by 4 plus 4. Um, every time that x goes up by 1. So the slope here would be 4 over 1, or 4 is what I would call the slope. Not coincidentally, in my equation, y is by itself, and 4 happens to be the, yikes, 4 happens to be the number times x there. All right. 
So I have uh, taken this uh, equation, y equals negative 6x plus 10, uh, and I've plotted and I found some points here. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Now, uh, what numbers do I have to choose for x? Well, I can choose any numbers I want. So, you know, lots of we have a discussion about, so why do I choose those numbers for x? Well, number one, they're pretty close to uh, right around 0, 0 or the origin, right, if we think back to chapter 1, 2. So they're right around the origin, so it's going to be, you know, maybe a little easier to graph. Um, so that might be one consideration. Choose numbers that are easy to graph. Because graphing itself, some of us are very good at it. Some of us maybe not as quite as good. four and two negative two and so we can see that these are going to line up we've got a linear equation a linear function and if I want to again examine Another thing we talked about slope was we call it the rise over the run. And the rise would indicate how much the graph rises or falls between points. Well, when we think of rise or fall, that's an up or down motion. That's a change in what direction, x or y. Y, right? Y tells you how much it go the value goes up or down. Uh, the run is a how much right or how much left does it go? That is a change in the x direction. So the rise is the change in the y values, right? And the run is the change in the x values. For our, if we look at our particular graph here, from this point to this point on the graph, we've got to go down one, two, three, four, five, down six, or a rise. I would say it's a rise of negative six and a run of an x change of positive 1. So it's negative 6 over 1, which is a negative 6 slope. And again, y is by itself, the number times x is negative 6. Not a coincidence. What if you said, well, I don't want to, what, I don't want to choose those two points. What if I chose the, the top point and the bottom point? Right? So top point was this one, the bottom point was this one. Well, if I counted it goes down 12 and over 2. So negative 12 over 2 also reduces to negative 6 over 1. So it, I do get the same uh, slope, same ratio, and the slope of this particular line is negative 6. Now, what if what, again, because I said that the number times x is the slope, and I made kind of a particular case that uh, when y is by itself, right? So the slope of this line was 4, 4 over 1, and the coefficient of x when y is by itself, or was in function form, was 4. Coefficient of that one was negative 6, and that was also the slope. Coefficient of x here is 2. It's not going to be the slope here, because y is not by itself. Um, and so this is in a different form. This isn't in function form. This is what we call standard form, where x and y are on the same side. So one method is to solve for y here. So subtract 2x from both sides. I get 5y equals negative 2x minus 10. Divide both sides by 5. And that would give me y equals negative 2 over 5x minus 2. And if this is the case, here would be a case where I would not want to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Because negative 2 for x gives me negative 2 fifths times negative 2 is uh, 4 fifths. 4 fifths minus 2, or that would be 10 fifths, would be negative 6 fifths or negative one one-fifth. It's like, man, i got to plot that. That sounds horrible. 
the first number that I would probably plot is I would put 0 in for x, all right? So if I put 0 in for x, what do I get for y? y equals negative 2 fifths times 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that one was a pretty easy one to find. The next one I, would not f I would, wouldn't find any of these. I would probably find 5, input of 5, because that will cancel out with this 5 and give me negative 2 minus 2, which is negative 4. Uh, I would probably also find negative 5, because negative 5 and 5 would cancel to be negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, minus 2 is 0. And so, I can see, if I, if I take a look, let me, plot, let me plot those points. If I plot those points, um, we got negative 5, 0. Uh, 0, negative 2, and 5, negative 4. These will line up. Not too bad for a line. Um, and then I could count that from this point to this point, I go down 2 and over 5. So that's a rise of negative 2 and a run of positive 5. That would be a slope of negative 2 fifths. Notice I'm using... Uh, the variable m. m is the variable that they gave for slope. Not s, because s basically stands for side of a square. Uh, so they had to come up with something else. They, did, they chose m. Again, I don't know why. So, um, But again, so the slope here is negative 2 fifths for this line. And now that y is by itself, the coefficient of x is the slope. And that will continue to be true. So it was important for us to take this line that was not in uh, function form, 2x plus 5y equals negative 10, and rearrange the equation so that it was in function form. Do you have to do that? Well, you don't have to, but it is uh, maybe a good idea in certain situations. All right, that's going to do it for these notes. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in class and deal with graphing and slopes and uh, functions. Thank you. Namaste.